In this video, I want to look at um, something we call telescoping integrals and how um, integration by parts quite often leads to these uh, telescoping integrals. We also get a little bit of a jump start on the next section, which is about uh, integration of uh, various trig functions and combinations of trig functions. Now, there's actually a couple ways you could do this integral. I want it, I'm choosing to do it by parts. So I'm going to do u equals du equals d equals dt equals. Um, I'm going to put, what am I going to do? I'm going to put a sine squared x right here and a sine x dx there. This may be the first example as well where I've actually split something up that maybe didn't look like it could be split up or you didn't even think about splitting it up. But anyway, this is sine x times sine x times sine x and so I can take any number of those signs here and the rest of them there. Um, but anyway, this is, uh, this is going to illustrate what I want it to do. So um, uh, with u equal to sine squared x then du is 2 sine x dx, sorry, 2 sine x cosine x dx. Uh, there's a chain rule there, right? And then the antiderivative of sine x is minus cosine x. So integration by parts. Um, I started with u dv, and so I end up with u times v. So negative sine squared x cosine x minus the integral of v du, this times that. Well, the minus and the minus are going to get together to be a plus. So I've got 2 sine x times the cosine squared x dx, right? Cosine squared because there's one cosine and there's another cosine. Um, okay, now I have to deal with this thing. And again, there's with a u substitution, this actually isn't very hard to do. Um, but I'm, I'm going to do it a little differently to illustrate the point because uh, I'm going to come back and look at it. What if I do it with bigger values? What if I do it with sine to the fifth or the seventh or the tenth or the, you know, pick a big value there. Um, and it's, this method is going to be the easier method in that case where there's the u substitution is probably easier in the small case. But um, anyway, um, I'm going to take that cosine squared x and use the Pythagorean relationship with that, uh, what is it, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So cosine squared x is, bring this over to the side, 1 minus sine squared x. So I've got minus sine squared x cosine x plus, oh, I'll put the 2 out in front. So I've got sine x times, and cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x, uh, dx. I'm then going to distribute this through, actually I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to distribute it through and I'm going to split the integral up. Well, now let's distribute it through first. Here we go. Minus sine squared x cosine x plus 2 times the integral of sine x minus sine cubed x dx. And now I'm going to use one of the properties of integrals and split this integral up into 2. So this is sine squared x sorry, minus sine squared x cosine x plus 2 times the integral of sine x minus 2 times the integral of sine cubed x dx. One of the things you might notice is that I've gotten back to um, this integral that I started with, right? This whole problem started up here with sine cubed x, and now I've got an integral of sine cubed x. So I'm going to write that right here. This is the integral of sine cubed x dx equals all this stuff. And what I can do now is I can take this minus 2 times this integral and add it over to the other side. So I've got 1 over there already. I'm going to add 2 more onto it. So 3 times the integral of sine squared x dx equals minus sine squared x cosine x plus 2 times the integral of sine x dx. Here's what I did. I started with an integral of sine cubed and I've gotten it down to an integral of sine x. I know how to do sine x. That's negative cosine x. I got to divide by 3, though. So the integral of sine cubed x dx is, I got a minus sine squared x cosine x plus 2, actually minus 2, but I'm going to integrate that to be minus cosine x, right, divided by 3. And there's a plus a constant. Anytime I pull that thing over to the other side, Oh, actually, I guess that's just right there. When you integrate that thing, you get the plus c. Okay. And you might want to say, hey, that plus c should be divided by 3, but 
but there's a distributive property and c divided by 3 is just c, it's another constant. Okay. The point that I want to make is that I started with an integral of, of sine cubed and I ended up with an integral of sine x. Okay. So let's try this on a bigger scale. Let's, I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but apparently there's a party going on in the office next door. Um, let's look at the integral of sine to the nx dx. And we'll do this in a very similar way. Okay, I'm going to write u here, du, v, dv. That I start with u and dv. I'm going to take one of the sine x's and put it here. And all the rest of them, so if there's n to start with, there's now n minus 1 of them there. Okay. Take the derivative or the differential here. So this is a power rule first of all. So n minus 1 times the sine n minus 2 x times the derivative of what's inside. Remember this is the sine of x raised to the n minus 1 power. So what's inside is the sine of x. The derivative of what's inside is the cosine of x dx. And then I take the antiderivative here to get minus cosine x Okay. Integration by parts, started off with u dv, so u times v um, minus sine to the n minus 1 x times the cosine of x minus the integral of v du. Uh, the minus and this minus will get together to make a plus sign. So I've got n minus 1 times the sine to the n minus 1, no, to the n minus 2 of x times the cosine squared of x. Cosine squared because there's a cosine of x right there times that cosine of x dx. Okay. Just like the last time I'm going to change that cosine squared x into a 1 minus sine squared x. So I've got minus sine to the n minus 1 x times the cosine of x plus the integral n minus 1 times sine to the n minus 2 x times 1 minus the sine squared x dx. All right. And just like last time, I'm distributing this stuff, this stuff into that parentheses. So I've got minus sine to the n minus 1 x times the cosine x plus the integral of n minus 1 times the sine to the n minus 2 x minus n minus 1 Actually, let's 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 just take that n minus one and throw it out in front of the integral altogether, and just deal with the signs on the inside. So this is times one, and then I got it times that. Well, sine to the n minus two times sine squared. The n minus two plus two is actually just n. So this is sine to the n x dx. Then I'm gonna split that up. So minus sine n minus 1 x cosine x plus n minus 1 times the integral of sine to the n minus 2 x minus n minus 1 times the integral of sine to the n x dx. The example we did before, n was equal to 3. So I had a sine cubed and a sine to the 3 minus 2, which is just 1, right? Um, but now, with it being not three, but maybe something other than three. It's still a similar looking integral, but this is n and n minus two. But remember, we started this problem as the integral of sine to the nx. And now I have, again, at the end here, an integral of sine to the nx. So I'm going to take all this stuff and move it over to the other side. Of, right? There's already on this side, there's an integral of sine to the nx dx. And so I've got n minus one of them subtracted on this side. So I'm going to add those over there. I've got one of them, and I'm adding on n minus 1 of these integrals. 1 integral plus n minus 1 of those integrals. 1 plus n minus 1 is n. So I end up with n of these integrals sine to the n x dx on that side. And what's left is all this stuff. Dividing by this n now, I get back to the integral of sine n x dx equals negative sine 
to the n minus 1 of x times the cosine of x divided by n plus n minus 1 over n times the integral of sine dn minus 2 x dx. This is what we would call a telescoping integral. It starts with an integral of sine of, to the 1 power, here sine, sine of nx, and it ends up with something plus an integral of sine to the n minus 2. Okay. Why is this called telescoping? Well, you think about those old-fashioned pirate telescopes where you pull them and one, one sleeve is inside the next sleeve and they get longer and longer and longer as you pull them out. Um, let, let's do an example here. How about the integral of um, sine to the 7x dx? Right. Well, sine to the 7x, according to this formula right here, with n equals 7, this looks like minus sine to the n minus 1. Well, if n is 7, n minus 1 is 6 times the cosine of x over 7, n was 7 here plus n minus 1, which is 6, over n, which is 7, times the integral of sine to the 5x dx. So the integral of sine to the 7th is this thing plus this integral, which is now sine to the 5th. Well, how do I do the integral of sine to the 5th? Well, I'm going to use this same formula again, but with n equals 5. So this is minus sine to the 6th x cosine x over 7 plus 6 sevenths times, well, the integral of sine to the 5x. So I'm just looking at this thing again, and I'm going to put this all in parentheses because the 6 seventh is times all this stuff. So I've got minus sine to the n minus 1. So if this is 5, n is 5, then n minus 1 is 4 times the cosine of x over n, which is now 5, plus 5 minus 1, which is 4, over... 5 times the integral of now n minus 2, but n is 5, so I'm looking at sine cubed x dx. So the 7th turned into something with an integral of sine to the 5th. The sine to the 5th turned into something with an integral of sine cubed, which we can now do the integral of sine cubed using the same formula again with n equals 3. So I've got sine to the 6x cosine x divided by 7 plus 6 sevenths times minus sine to the 4th x cosine x over 5 plus 4 fifths times, and the sine cubed here, um, well, we did sine cubed. We might be able to just write down the answer, but let's just look at it on the formula here. Um, I've got minus sine to the n minus 1, so sine squared x cosine x divided by 3 plus n minus 1, that's 2 divided by n, 3, the integral of sine of n minus 2, so that's just the integral of sine x dx. Let's close that parentheses, close that one, and close that one, and there you go. Now, hey, I know the integral of sine x is just negative cosine x, right? So what's the integral of sine to the seventh? Well, it's this thing plus 6 seventh times all this stuff, which is this plus 4 fifths times all that stuff. Right. Um, a telescoping integral. Each integral gives you the integral of something else. And using exactly the same formula, it gives you the integral of something else, um, just with a different value of n being used. Okay. Anyway, that's the notion of the telescoping integral. There's a couple of them uh, in this section. We'll see him again in the next section as we run into a couple of different types of, of uh, integrals involving trig functions. So, there you go.